Now it's time for chapter 50, Regan's Last Stand. Welcome, 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 little lady. Regan's raspy voice boomed from across the great hall. I see you finally come to get the ether. I barely slept last night. I was so excited for you to come here. Bree started walking slowly towards Regan, the others following close behind. As she did, Zerum whispered something to Regan, turned and disappeared behind the throne. Your pirates can't save you, Regan, she shouted. She was surprised how confident her, her voice sounded. Surrender and this will be over quickly. As she got closer, Regan stood, bringing with him something that had been hidden on the side of the throne. It was a rather large mace with a diamond-like head and that had many spikes. Bree halted her approach and readied her mystic sword. It doesn't have to be like this, Regan, she said, trying to sound uh, as confident as she was before. I have the power of the Royal Golian army behind within me, and friends who will battle to the bitter end. Blaze and Odiana nodded, taking a defensive stance. Regan chuckled as he shifted his hand along the handle of the mace. The spiked head fell off, dragging a chain behind it, turning it into a deadly flail. Then you'll all suffer the same fate, Regan said calmly. This is the Guardian's flail. With it, I'll take the power of the elements from you, and Zerum and I will rule this land absolutely. Bree shook her head. Zerum will kill you after he has the ether. He's a dark fiend that controlled the other fiends guarding the elements. You don't think I know that already? A moment of silence passed between them before Bree retracted the mystic sword's blade and dropped the hilt to the floor. I won't fight you, Regan. Together we'll stop Zerum. No, he replied, his voice cold with anger. And dropping your weapon was your first mistake. Regan's next movement was faster than anyone expected as he swung the guardian's flail and sent the spiked mace head flying at Bree. Like the grip hook, the chain on Regan's weapon extended across the room, making it a formidable weapon of choice. Bree dove out of the way as the spiked head destroyed the section of the floor where she had just been standing. Blaze and Odiana jumped in the opposite direction, and with a jerking movement of his shoulder, Regan retracted the mace the mace head back to his side and then swung it again. Bree dodged it, but as it fell, Regan snapped his wrist, causing the spiked head to alter its course directly at her. She brought her hands up and caught the head of the mace. Instead of stopping it in its place, she was thrown back against the eastern wall, her hands now stuck on the spikes. She cried in pain as her hands, part of her chest, and most of her back hurt from the impact. Regan snapped his arm again, drawing the mace head back to him and causing Bree to be thrown a few feet back to the center of the room. Once the head was back, Regan began to descend from the throne's platform. I know you have mystic trinkets, Bree, he seethed. No strength bracelet is gonna is good enough to stop my attack. Zirin made sure of that. Bree felt groggy from the hit that she just took, so she looked up at him with bleary eyes. What? I still have some of the gifts of the ether that gave the royal Golian soldiers. Zirin used some of his abilities to make sure they didn't diminish once I took over this kingdom. He was about to continue, but a sudden blast of lightning surged through his body. Blaze stood a few feet away, firing a blast from the Thunderbird feather. Odiana was using Morgana's wand to enhance Blaze's magic. Regan struggled to fight the attack, but soon fell to one knee and screamed out in pain. Standing, Bree took out her bow and one of her Rosarum arrows. As she did that, Regan fought through the control the electricity had in his muscle and swung the mace once again. Bree jumped to avoid it, aimed at the arrow aimed the arrow at Regan and fired. The explosion caused everyone to stop their attack as they were all knocked over. Seeing that Blaze and Odiana were only a little shaken, Bree found her footing and ran over to Regan. He was collapsed at the throne, not moving. She crouched down to check on him and noticed a small twitch in his arms. Bree wondered if it was from any remaining electricity from Blaze's attack. Regan suddenly twisted his body and punched Bree in the face very hard. She fell down the stairs and landed on the floor next to the remains of the flail. Regan struggled to stand. That blast of Roserum was nothing. It'll just be a bruise for a while. He was slurring his words of the pain. Now, now I'll lend you your pet and your fairy. Bree turned to see Regan crouch down and pick up an arrow that had fallen out of her quiver when he hit her. She began crawling away and soon saw the hilt from the mystic sword a few feet away. She channeled the strength and stamina given to her by the ether and pulled it herself to it. Regan jumped from where he stood, holding the arrow over his head, hoping to plunge it into Bree. She grabbed the hilt, rolled over, and threw it at Regan, activating the blade as she let go. 
The mystic sword formed and sliced through his arm, causing him to turn in the air so that he would land on his back. As Bree rolled out of the way, she left the quiver of arrows behind so Regan would hit it. The explosion blew up the floor in the middle of the throne room, leaving a large crater in the middle. Once the debris stopped falling, Bree found herself near the eastern wall again, now covered in wood and carpet bits. She rolled over and saw that nothing was left of her quivers, the arrows, or Regan. Across the hole, she could see Blaze and Odiana picking themselves up. They nodded in her direction. She suddenly felt the vibration in her chest, so she reached inside her top and took out her pendant. The four elemental jewels continued to glow, but now the jewel farthest from her pulsated with dark purple light. My darkness, she said to herself.